I've been waiting for this moment for a long time, for two weeks. I haven't been sleeping for two weeks. Tonight I'm going to sleep good. I spoke with my daughter earlier today. She sounds very good. She looks very good. She was very happy. And she's waiting to come home. I'm going to hug her and kiss her. And uh, it's going to be the best day of my life. That was the father of one of the two American Israeli hostages speaking tonight after his daughter and his ex wife were freed by their captors, the terrorist group Hamas. This video, shot and released by Hamas's military wing, shows the moment when Judith and Natalie Renan, mother and daughter from Evanston, Illinois, were released to the Red Cross. As you can see, Hamas blurred the faces of its militants. The two freed hostages spoke on the phone this evening with President Biden, who pledged his full support as they recover. About 200 more hostages are thought to be in the hands of Hamas and other militant groups, and 10 Americans are still unaccounted for. Today, while announcing the release of the two Americans, Secretary of State Antony Blinken thanked the government of Qatar for their, quote, very important assistance. The Wall Street Journal is reporting today that another deal involving the U.S., Israel and Qatar would have led to the release of 50 hostages, but fell apart. Joining us now is Martin Flesher, for, former MS and sorry, former NBC News Middle East correspondent and Tel Aviv bureau chief. Judith and Natalie also happen to be members of Martin's extended family. What a joyous moment this must be uh, for you and your family, Martin. I, I'm I think we're all so happy to have this good news and what is such a dark, dark moment. I know that they're kind of extended family, but as as a as someone related to them and as a journalist, what questions do you have for them as they come back to America? I don't have any questions. I'm just thankful they're free, alive, apparently healthy. Already spoke to his daughter. And, you know, obviously full of questions, but they're going to be traumatized. Of course. You know, and uh, I would imagine the first thing they're going to do if I was them, I'd get the heck out of Dodge, go straight to the airport, come home. Because they were tourists in Israel. They were yeah. just visiting their grandmother to celebrate her 85th birthday. When they were taken, uh, I do wonder. Uh, uh, you know, there is there is concern about. There's obviously widespread concern about the hostages, and further concern about the ground invasion and how that complicates the picture of releasing them. I, I, I given the fact that this initial, at least one of the initial negotiations, seems to have gone well. It's resulted in the release of two people. Do you think this is going to put pressure on Netanyahu to delay the ground invasion for some period of time to let? other ongoing neg negotiations work out? If there are ongoing negotiations, and you mentioned one that fell through, yeah. then yes. But at the same time, that's, that's good for Israel in one sense, because they need much better intelligence before they send their troops into the, in, in, in on the ground. I mean, we know they completely failed in anticipating the, the attack in the first place. So the vaunted Israeli intelligence services must now be looking at the information that they had before and reassessing everything. So the, the extra time probably plays into the hands of the Israeli intelligence services. They don't want to send the troops in before they have as much information as possible. And, of course, they're being helped in terms of finding the hostages, at least, by American intelligence agencies, too. So it gives them a bit more time. Do you, were you surprised that this came together? I mean, I think everybody was surprised at the result, but that, that, that hostage negotiations could even be successful at this point. I wasn't surprised because that's what they do. It was pretty clear there would be immediately contacts through Qatar and Egypt, backed by the United States, to make contact with the hostage, with Hamas, and to, and to try and come to some kind of deal. And there was talk about that. You know, there was early talk um, a few days ago about a partial release of women and children. Israel, for women and children held in, Israel, in Israeli jails, Israel has uh, 30 female security prisoners in its jails and about 120 minors. So you can see that that, that would be an automatic swap. Mm -hmm. And apparently that's probably what they were talking about. When, when we say the deal fell through, it may come back to life again. Let's hope so.